Today, we are tearing down an engine that has already been on the channel. But how could that even be? This engine's still complete. How could you possibly get two videos out of one engine? Well, if you happen to catch my last video, then you already know this is a 2 liter out of a 2013 Volkswagen CC. This is an engine that ran. And then it didn't because I... I blew it up. I blew this engine up. And I'm not ashamed to say that I have blown up engines before, but this was the first one that I, I, I kind of did it on purpose. Yeah, if, if you'd like to watch that video, before you watch the teardown of this engine, I'll leave a link or button or tag somewhere, card, one of those words will be around me and you can click on it. Otherwise, if you want to watch the teardown first, or if you've already seen the other video, I hope you enjoy. One thing I have noticed over the last several years in the comments of my videos is how much you all really appreciate the details on the engines I tear down every single week. Whether it's the mileage or the type of vehicle the engine came out of, perhaps the condition of the vehicle the engine came out of, maybe why it was condemned or thought to be bad, or even how I obtained the engine in the first place. But it, in this case, I, I know all the details on this engine. I know everything about the car it came out of. This is out of a car that I bought at the tow lot because it was abandoned. And typically people don't abandon good cars. It's usually bad cars. In this case, it was a 2013 Volkswagen CC with 162,000 miles on it. This is the CBFA engine, which is the low emissions two liter. It produces 200 horsepower and 207 block breaking, rod bending foot pounds of torque. I, I'm saying that it's a little bit of foreshadowing in this case. Now this engine did run and it was claimed to run when I bought the car. I also know exactly what it was like in its final moments because I could have possibly maybe definitely been the guy behind the wheel when it happened. This engine should be a lot of fun to tear down. So this car had lots of red flags before I even tried to start it. The first being that I found a complete jug of fresh oil in the trunk. I also found a brand new oil pump in the trunk. And then I noticed that someone installed a new oil pressure sending unit. And typically that's uh, chasing a problem that you're not gonna fix from the outside. In my experience, uh, while these do fail and while engines do need oil pumps on occasion, and of course they use oil, there's an underlying problem when you see these things together. I also know that this vehicle took two jump packs to even get it to crank, which tells me there was a lot of rotational resistance. And at that point, once it fired up, it sounded like, uh, So once I got it fired up, I knew the engine was toast. And at that point, once I was faced with the sorrow of not having a $3,000 engine to sell, I concocted a plan to make the most of it, which involved uh, some things that I've never done before. I've broken stuff on purpose, but never a complete engine. Let me, let me, let me show you what it looks like from the outside. So I'm going to rotate this engine over. Hopefully it doesn't leave a mess on my floor. It's probably going to leave a mess on the floor. And you can kind of see we have an exit wound on the back side of the block. And it looks like it's in line with cylinder number two. It's leaking on the floor. I know you're scared. It's going to be okay. And then on the other side, let's get this cranked the other way. You can kind of see there's a little bit more damage. Uh, there's a lot more damage. That is the big end of a connecting rod and a broken bracket. That's actually the oil filter housing. Yes, oil filter housing is bad. Oh no, a sellable part that had metal run through it. I also can tell you that it broke the AC compressor, which was the only actual part I could have sold that was an a, a casualty from this. And they're worth a solid 50 bucks. Used AC compressors for Volkswagens, not a high ticket item. And from this vantage point, you can see heavy carnage. This is gonna be a fun one, guys. How bad is it? Oh, hey, look, there's a wrist pin just hanging out for future use. Clearly, the next thing that I need to do is see if the engine turns over. I, I will say this engine came to an abrupt stop, but that doesn't mean the engine's locked up. That might mean the engine's locked up. We just need a bigger bar, that's, that's all. This'll do it. Oh, it's, it's just not a big enough bar, that's the problem. This'll do it, right? 
That wasn't a good sound. Let's keep going. Nope, I'm going to break the, the bolt off. So, it might, you know what? We haven't gone backwards. Don't ever do this. Oh, surprise, surprise, it won't go backwards. Oh, it's reverse thread. No, it's not. Okay, so we loosen the crank bolt and the engine's locked up. Got it. The first thing I'm going to do is get this inlet pipe out of the way. It's in the way. That's not right. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't Volkswagen very often. And I think it shows. It's going to show in this video. Yeah, I'm just going to break it because it's crankcase vent part. These should be new every time. Good grief, that took too long. There, now we have good access to the coil so we can get the plugs out. These should come right out. That's good enough. I'm sure these will come right off. They did on the last Volkswagen engine. Next, we'll pull the plugs. Well, to my chagrin, nothing is smashed, bent, or broken, but the plugs don't look good. A lot of buildup on these. This one is the odd one out, and that's because it wasn't firing at the end, I guess. That could be why. That's the one that had a problem, at least we think. The rest of these just don't look that great. This engine very much still has the wire harness on it. So I'm going to take a minute, and we're going to get this thing stripped of its harness. It's also not really how that comes off, but I got it. Yes. And we're off. I think this engine harness is in good shape. I didn't break any connectors. I think at this point, it's time to lose this fuel line. Oh, leaking a little fuel. I don't know how the, what the... I'm just gonna start unbolting stuff because I'm just going to do that. I have a T30 and I'm not scared to use it. This uh, plastic coolant pipe has uh, been broken, but that happened likely when the edge was being pulled out or when uh, it was being handled onto the stand. I broke it. I'm sorry. Look at that, we're getting close to being able to remove the intake manifold. Oh, it's still tight. Now the next two require a little bit longer of an extension. I can't believe this isn't working the way I thought it would. There. Did I get them all? It sure doesn't seem, it sure seems like it might be. It's loose. I think I need blue. So soon, blue. Hey, wake up, you gotta go to work. Oh, you know what? There's a bracket. There's a triple square hider. It's not really a hider, I just didn't know it was there. It's more looser now. Oh no, it looks like I need to remove. Oh, we're leaking. What are we leaking? Fuel? Yes, fuel. And the oil filter is in the way. Let's see if we can power through it. Yeah, see? That was dumb. Well, it looks like we got three injectors stuck in the head. One injector came with the 
fuel rail, which is a bizarre contraption on the intake manifold. One connector is. What has, what has happened? What? What the? What the? Just, what? Just be free! And we're off. Let's peek a take at these intake valves and ports. Cylinder one looks okay. Cylinder two is a little on the wet side. That's also the cylinder that the injector was able to come with the rail. And cylinder three is all a little cruddy, uh, maybe a little more cruddy on that cylinder. It's definitely not as bad as we've seen on other DI engines. Now we're gonna start on the turbo. We're just gonna start zipping some bolts out, start with the uh, turbo bracket. One thing I noticed is that there's a bolt or a stud missing. I wonder if that vibrated out or if someone's been in here and didn't put it back. The oil feed. The oil return. Those are both loose. Didn't really need to take that one out, but this one, it's coolant that's loose. And then I've got one that I have to remove with this line. I'm trying to do this the right way. I said I'm going to try to do this the right way. Spring clamps. I love them and I love them. All right, now we're going to crack the manifold. There is a turbo support bracket bolt. I have to take the whole bracket off. Oh, please don't break. Oh, that's gonna break. The nut is captured. I guess all the heat cycles from being bolted to the exhaust housing of the turbo has frozen that. I'm gonna break my bit. Don't wanna do that. That would be bad. So we're gonna do the next best thing. We're just gonna modify the bracket. I think that's enough. Let's keep going. That feels good. Let's see if we can't, uh... oh, see? See, now it moves. Is that bracket still a problem? No? Yes? We're off. To see the wizard. Here's a better look at the hole in the block. It's really not that bad. You could just kind of tape it up or as you guys like to say, use some JB Weld. Unfortunately, there's not really much to check out on the turbo because of the design of the compressor housing. We can get a good look at the exhaust housing. It does spin pretty freely, has uh, no excess play. The wastegate seems pretty firm. I don't know, what do you think? We're selling, I don't think Volkswagen turbos in factory form are very expensive. So this might just be a core. Next, I suppose we can get this stop oil filter off. Is it gonna leak on me? Nope. We're gonna get this cut open. We'll get a look at it a little bit later in the video. Hmm. I don't think that's, is that supposed to come off that way? I don't think that's supposed to come off that way. I'm gonna hop back over to this side of the engine and we're gonna take out some of these triple squares to get the oil filter housing and cooler off. Did I miss anything? We'll come back to that. Let's get this big bracket off first. Let's get this big chonky aluminum bracket out of the way. I suppose it's time to get the dipstick tube out. I don't anticipate any problems. Oh, I missed one. Easy peasy. Let's just pry on this and see what happens. Oh, oil is coming out. All right. Well, oh, there's some witness marks from, from carnage. While we're here, let's get the water pump off.
Did I miss a bolt or are we still, oh, I missed a bolt. It really helps when you get them all out. Now we have this cover because there's a belt in here. This has a water pump belt. There's our little belt. I always thought this was the weirdest thing. Do these ever break, Volkswagen guys? I know the water pumps go bad. The thermostat's built into that housing right there, but does, does the belt ever break? Now this water pump seems to be in really good condition. I don't see any damage at all. This could be installed in another engine with no problems. I just, I gotta put it somewhere safe, out of harm's way. You know, I think, Nobody's going to mess with it there. All right, we're, we're going to unveil this hole a little bit better. That was loose. There's a good look at the hole. That sounds so wrong. Let's get this poor knock sensor out of here. This thing was working overtime all the way to the very end. Now, let's get into the timing cover. Let's pull the upper one first. So, looking at the chain system, I don't see any broken parts in this area. Chain looks good. I can see two of the cam lobes. The valve train looks good. Next, we'll move on to the lower. We already loosened that. Relax. My quarter drive ratchet didn't just do that. This thing's a rather dirty engine. Now we can pop off this lower cover. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So the timing system as a whole looks aggressively complex. It kind of is, but it's it's a four cylinder. So imagine this timing setup on something like a, a 4.2 V8 or a 5.2 V10, which we have seen at least the latter on the channel before. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, but I don't see anything broken. I don't see anything missing. However, uh, everything has a light film of metallic oil on it, and oil should not have metal in it, but metal should have oil on it. You guys taught me that one. Next, we're going to remove the high pressure fuel pump, and I believe this is a vacuum pump. I'm just gonna take this all off in one piece. I'm gonna get this bracket out of the way first. Easy peasy. There's the inside there, there's the roller, and then there's the vacuum pump. Oh boy, look at all that metal right there. We got a bunch of sparklies. Next, we're gonna remove the crankcase ventilation components. It's acting like I didn't get them all. I have no fear. There we are. Like many other German engines, these engines have the cam caps integral to the valve cover. So the next thing we're going to do is crack all these loose so that we can pull the valve cover off. Start off with the primary chain tensioner. That's under tension. I have a couple rails. Whoa! It's fine. Let's take a look at these rails. Pretty moderate wear up here, and it seems to have a lot of bearing material infused with it. I definitely wouldn't use this. 
At this point, this chain is pretty loose, but this rail right here won't come off because of this, which I don't know how to take this off. I feel like it has something to do with this. We'll cross that bridge when we get on that bridge. I'll just let that chain kind of dangle. The tension's off of that, which is what I wanted. Now it's time to zip these out. Give you a little place to pry right here. It wasn't too much effort. And valve cover is off. And we can get the exhaust cam right out. Oh, I see how this works. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty slick. Uh, the chain is hung up on something. Oh. There we are. Cam set removed. Let's take a peek at these journals. Ouch. That's not good. Also not good. Not good. Not bad. These don't look too terrible. That one has some damage. It gets worse towards the front of the engine. All the rockers, all the valve train look pretty good. It's just the journals. Take a look at these cams. They're done. Pretty chewed up. These are going to the bin. And now I'm going to flip this over. It's going to make a giant mess. Bolts, screws everywhere. It wasn't so bad. Yeah, bad. Really torn up. This engine was run low on oil at least on several occasions. Maybe more. Now we can pull this rail out. Let's take a look at this. This one has some pretty good wear on it too. It's still very usable. Looks to be original, 2012. Yeah, that's an original component. It's not bad. Before we get to the big head bolts, we have a few of these that bolt the front of the head to the block. And they don't make any noise. I lied. Before we pull the head, I'm going to remove this EGR stuff. Let's just get this cleaned up a bit. Oh, well that was pretty simple. Pretty sure I can pull the head with that on there. So let's unbolt it. Now it is time to remove the head bolts. Now the head bolts are a somewhat special socket. You can uh, get them on Amazon. They're only like 10 or 15 bucks. It's, uh, it's like a ribe socket, six point. Uh, if you just Google 3452M10, you can find it. That's what I did. Now I believe I can lift the head right off. There's the head gasket. Looks good. Well, it's really not too bad in here. Cylinder one looks decent. Cylinder two, not so decent. I can tell you that that piston is cracked right at the valve release for the intake side. And you can tell by the exhaust side of the crown that the piston has hit the cylinder head. Cylinder three looks good and cylinder four looks good. And now it's time for the test. Cylinder one, solid. Cylinder two, disconnecting rod. Cylinder three, solid. 
So three out of four is not bad. It's kind of what we figured we'd find. And as you'd expect, there's some damage to the combustion chamber on cylinder two. It's the cylinder that let go. It's really not too bad though. I think the rod knock that you hear is sometimes the piston hitting the cylinder head. Sometimes it's the bottom end hitting the, the uh, crankshaft without a, a bearing in place. Sometimes it's both. In this case, it definitely struck the head a few times, but it didn't do any major damage. It's too bad the journals are wiped out. That's what these engines do. Now I'm going to make sure this thing is drained. It did have oil in it. Yeah, this is loose. It did have oil in it before I even tried to crank this thing over. But it's been sitting. Yeah, so my guys drained it and that's just some residual because this engine's been sitting for uh, probably a week or two. Because I'd really like to get the balance shafts out of this engine, since all the rest of the timing system is connected, I'm gonna remove this plug right here so that I can get on this right here. So slide this off so the balance shaft can go that way. This might not work. It's not working. If it's turning stuff in here. Yep. There's some not so great things happening in there. I don't really know how to stop that. It looks like I can put a tool in here and lock the shaft. That is incorrect. That is not any kind of tool. There's nothing to go in there. So I guess we're gonna have to jam it up once we get this a little further apart. Well, let's start unbolting some stuff. That rail has some chunks of metal on it. That one's got some wear as well. You can see it's kind of sparkly. Bass boat paint. Nope, that doesn't work that way. What, would you? You know what? We're just gonna take that out. Well, that spring, that'll get you. You can kind of see how sparkly the oil is in this engine. Now we can get this out. Yeah, none of these are broken. A little bit of wear there. These all look original to me. And then this comes out, there's that chain. Now I can take this chain off. All right guys, I figured it out. So if you hold this in here. Nope, didn't figure anything out. Forget I said anything. Let's try something. This has bad idea written all around it. It's so bad, in fact, it doesn't work. How are you supposed to get this out? Are you supposed to get this out? You know what we haven't tried? We haven't tried blue. I think I'm getting it. Is this left hand thread or right hand thread? I don't know. Let's try to go the other way and see what happens. Nothing bad could happen here because nothing can happen here. Ah, yes, that's the way. I like it. Okay, I got it loose. I was going the wrong way. No harm, maybe harm, some foul. Okie dokie, there's the belt off. I guess you have to do that to change the belt. Now I think we can get this off. All right, we're getting places. I don't think this comes out this way. I really don't. Let's try the other side. Oh, hey, that one moves. You know, there might be more stuff inside the engine keeping this in place. So maybe we'll just uh, tack that after it's more disassembled. Normally, I'd rotate this engine over to pull the lower bounce house. But in this case, we're going to pull it in this position because there could be some 
gifts in there and I don't want them falling into the engine where they're hard to get. I'm seeing multiple colors of sealant. That's not a good sign. Ooh, that, that's not, that's not good. Whatever this fastener is, is, is unhappy. Well, we'll just work around it. I bought this tool quite some time ago. This is the first time I'm using it. I need blue in addition. Okay, so we still have a fastener here, and that's that one that's stripped. It might ruin this oil pan. Oh no. Oh, I hear loose stuff in there. I really need to get that fastener out. If this doesn't do it, this might not do it. It did it. Yeah. I don't know why it had that one odd fastener in there. It makes no sense. What do we have in here? Oh, there's stuff. Well, we have a few things in here. This is the most identifiable. It's half of a fractured rod cap, and I, that's a joke, and it's also a, not a joke. This looks like part of the block. That looks like part of, or a upper oil pan, rather. We have a circlip for a wrist pin. We have a whole bunch of uh, bearing material. Man, there's, I have no idea what some of this is. We'll give this a bath, but let me show you the silverness to this. The light usually does a pretty good job. Look at the goo and the paste in this thing. This thing was a bearing mill for a long time. There's some large chunks, small chunks. Lots of good stuff. All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like without the pan on it. And you can tell that <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not supposed to be there. That's, it's upside down. I don't know that we've seen that before. And then of course we got some debris scattered on this windage tray. See, if I turn this engine over like this, all the stuff's gonna fall up into the uh, inside of the pistons and it would have been just a, a mess. Oh, we got multiple exit wounds in there. Wonder what else we'll find. So we can't really tell how this windage blowage tray comes out. I bet it's bolted somewhere. Oh, we're raining engine parts. As long as we catch them all, they can go back together. Oh, there's part of piston. Oh, there's another circlip. Hey, I think we've collected both of those. There's a mutilated rod cap bolt. More chunks of engine are raining down as I even try to get this off. Ah, yes, bolts. That helped me. No. Ooh, it feels looser now and more parts are raining. Did that help me? Uh, we still have something in the very back. It's hard to see when it's upside down. I just really don't want to fish all this stuff out. Yeah, there's one more. All right, this should do it. I said should. Nope. That was unnecessarily tight. All right, bolts out. Oh yes, there's pieces, species, all species of pieces. All right, so this is the pile of stuff that I found loose when I removed this, and this is how this came down. A little bit of damage right here. Of course, we've got a lot of chunks here. Good as new. Now we're gonna rotate this thing over. See how, just how bad it is. Do I hear loose stuff? Well, we're leaking. Coolant. And some oil. Wow, that's uh, much worse than I anticipated. Here's your oil pump, the pickup screen looks like it has a little bit of debris in it, but yeah, a lot more debris in it actually, the more you look. And then we've got, <laughs> 
our little uncle hanging out there. Looks like Uncle Rodney just dropped in. That is uh, very locked up, very not coming out of there. We'll get it out. Believe you me. Oil pump, does that turn? Ooh, the oil pump is locked up. I wonder why that is. Well, the next step is to remove the oil pump. Is that it? Oh yeah, that's it. Well, that has revealed more damage and more chunks. All this oil pump is just laden with debris. Look how sparkly everything is. The fact that it's locked up is kind of suspicious because I don't really, I don't see any impact marks on it per se. But I bet we'll find out why it won't turn. Let's see what we can get out of this bearing slurry. But not a lot of it, which tells me that wasn't enough to clog it. Here you can see there's flakes still in there. But it's not a, not a large amount of it. Now we need to take the pump apart. Let's get that, that one that I don't have a tool for off first. So this is either going to take this off or it's gonna break the pump free to where it spins. I'm hoping the former, but of course not. Oh, look what it's kicking out. Hey, it took it out. Now I just have some more tooling that I don't have very many of. Well, let's give this a whirl. Let's uh, soak up some of this metal oil. And we'll just give it a little, little tap. That ought to do it. It's getting there. It's still very not wanting to come off. This, Blue will help us out here. Oh, tons of metal in there. Well, let's take a look at this. There's not a ton of wear. Not on the surface of the gear, but you can see that there was some debris on the actual shaft. And definitely some metal made it through here. But, that's where the, the big damage is. Heavy scoring. And on this as well. And I bet some metal got in there between those bushings and the shafts and, and that's why it was so difficult to turn the oil pump. You can see the metally hue to this oil. Bearing infused. Now it's time to remove uh, this upper oil pan and I have no idea how this is going to work because Uncle Rodney is kind of intruding. I wish there was something I could do to get all the bolts out at once. Oh wow, it's already loose. How does this... Oh, I see. Oh. Pretty nice handle. Well, the upper oil pan impact, several impacts, and at least one, maybe two over here, which tells me stuff bounced around in here for at least a, a little while before it locked up. So this is gonna be a lot of fun to get apart. We've got some components in here. There's a rod cap bolt. That looks like piston. There's a, an oil squirter hanging out right there. You can definitely tell this counterbalance pushed part of that rod cap through that uh, upper oil pan. And I bet we'd see the similar marks on those counterbalances on the crankshaft. I think all these chunks probably fell in here as I turned the engine over. It's pretty wild. That rod's gonna be a problem. Now I really don't wanna damage this, but I don't. Wow, okay. Maybe we need a little bigger hammer. Let's try this hammer. What if we just... 
That seems dangerous. It's, it's more loose. Oh, she's wiggling. But I wonder if I can turn that crank over now and get it out of the way. Let's see if Old Blue will do the job. Let's uh, rotate this a little bit more. I don't want to knock too much of the debris back into the engine. There's not really a good place to pry. I'm sure the tone wheel is strong enough for this. Well, we've made progress. It looks like if I pull this cap off, I can get the rod out. Is it looks like the end of this rod is, is stuck. I'm gonna pull that, those two bolts out and pull this blade. Nah. Man. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do. That did not help me. I thought it might help me. Maybe it helped me. I think it's moving. Oh, we're getting more stuck. It gets worse before it gets better. Almost there. So close I can taste it. It's kind of sour. Yes! At this point, I'm going to remove the rod caps from cylinders one and four because I have easy access to them. Ooh, that, that's going to need a little help. Next, I'm going to gently move the crank, rotate the crank so that I have access to both of the bolts on cylinder three's rod cap. That should do it. Next, we're gonna remove the rest of the main cap splayed bolts. Not really splayed bolts, side bolts, whatever you wanna call them. And the rest of the main cap bolts. Oh no. We'll get back to that one. Got a little wild with the hammer there. It's all right. I believe this one is the thrust. That's why it's easy to take out. At this point, by my calculations, the crankshaft should be able to come out. Got this pesky remain seal plate. Haven't had to force a crankshaft out like this in quite some time. How can we get this out without damaging it? There we are. And we're out. Well, let's take a look in this thing. Look at that. It's ready to use. The wrist pin just hanging out in there. There's the rest of the piston. Looks like uh, the rod did quite a bit of damage. And I would bet that that chunk of the rod cap bounced around between cylinders one and three and did the damage to the uh, lower oil pan. Cylinder four looks like it survived, but there's debris throughout just from moving the engine around on the stand. Well, I guess we can remove this. Look at that. For sale, one Volkswagen wrist pin, stress tested. 
I've got a bunch of uh, stuff in here. I'm just going to co collect this all for science. There's more pieces. There we go. We're, we're ready to go back together. I'm going to rotate this one last time to make my final mess. Don't mind that. I don't really know where that came. Oh, it's a, it's a main bearing. I think the other ones will stay in their spot. Or not. Let's see how easy these are to come out. Oh, butter. This one's a little stubby. Oh no, we're flinging rings. Those just fell right out. I would kind of like to get this apart a little further. Nope, that one is broken off. What's behind here? Crankcase ventilation. Nothing that's holding this shaft in. So what holds that shaft in? Let's just try some things. They may not work out, but they might. Hey, oh no, oh no. What have I done? Oh, I know how to fix this. I thought I knew how to fix this. Yeah, see, it's fine. It's fine, guys. And now I can pull the balance shaft out. And I, I ruined it. I don't really care. And finally, we're going to try once more to get the other balance shaft out. That wasn't bad. Let's take a look at the rod bearings. Cylinder one, not good. Cylinder twos, um, that was the powder we found all over the inside of the engine. Cylinder threes, not good. These all have damage from oil starvation. And onto the rods and pistons. Quite a bit of skirt wear. The rods seem to be okay. This one took several hits. I wouldn't sell it after uh, being hammer forged like that. What's interesting is, you know, I thought these things always had uh, piston ring problems, but these all look pretty decent. Maybe this thing has had pistons put in it. Now this one, um, it's held together with the rings. You can tell it's, it's broken. It made hard contact with the head. And see, there's, there's two real ways that these engines blow up when they have uh, no rod bearing in them and they're hammering. Sometimes the piston shatters when it hits the cylinder head, and sometimes the rod cap blows apart. In this case, I think the piston shattered, but the rod cap blew apart too. Here's what's left of it. I don't know what happened to this other corner. Uh, maybe it's in the wreckage here and I just missed it. These bolts are annihilated. What happens is when there's no rod bearing here, the space that would normally be occupied by the rod bearing is missing. So this thing bangs around on the journal of the crankshaft until it ovals and eggs this out. And that repeated hammering, as that gets larger and larger, the hits get harder and harder and it eventually shatters the rod cap or it'll break the, end, the big end off of a rod. In this case, this rod was thrust upside down and twisted through the lower oil, upper oil pan. And as you can see, it's, it's an awesome desk piece, that's for sure. And keep in mind, if you'd like to buy anything out of these engines, pretty much every engine I tear down on this channel, the parts are available for sale. Then we move to cylinder three. It's not so bad, but I do believe that this took a few hits. And the cylinder four looks like it came out pretty unscathed. Moderate skirt wear, a little bit of damage there. And the main bearings are uniformly damaged. Pretty rough looking, but none of them spun. And the crankshaft, well, that's really impressive. Look at the damage to the crank. That's what locked it up and turned that rod sideways. 
see that journal is all beat up. The rest of them don't really look too bad. They polish out, but it's kind of a moot point when there's that much damage to the crankshaft. And here are the balance shafts. And I believe this one, this one definitely took a few hits. It was a innocent bystander. I think this one, this one doesn't appear to have uh, hit anything or gotten hit by anything. That one seems to be good. Although that's not good. There's chunks of metal stuck in there. I can't remember which one of these I had. Oh, it was this one that I had to hammer out. So this one came right out and then there's chunks of, of engine in there. It's fine. Don't look there. And the oil filter, well, you guessed it. It's silver. I could scrap this for money. There's so much aluminum in here. It was definitely doing its job, but there's just so much metal that it could to catch. Can't catch it all. The block bores have considerate wear. This one, obviously, this is the one that let go. There's lots of damage. Vertical scratches, lots of wear there too. This one's going to the bin. I think this was a really important exercise, which puts some perspective into the engines we've tore down on this channel. I did a lot to blow this engine up. I ignored all the warning signs, visual, audible. I could even smell that bad things were happening. And I pushed through until the engine blew up. I could have perhaps driven it down the road or brake boosted it, put some load on the engine, and it might've been worse, maybe. But e even that being the case, this was bad, but think about some of the other engines we've torn down on the channel. The, the Kia Sorento V6 that lost four or four and a half of its six rods. The J series, the J35 that just shut off going down the highway. Or even what I consider the worst one on the channel, the Dodge Ram V10 that shot main caps into the oil pan. What was happening in those situations? How did they get it so bad? Because I tried with this and I didn't even get anywhere near that level of destruction. I'm not the guy that's going to be blowing up engines all the time. It's, it's really situational and I don't like wasting good parts. In this case, th most of the parts on this engine were ruined for reuse anyhow. I, I wouldn't have sold anything out of this engine. Maybe the upper oil pan, the head was going to be wasted. Maybe the, no, the crank would have been trashed. It would have, anything oil touched would have been wasted anyway. I just kind of rearranged it. And you all like seeing the carnage and there wasn't a lot of core value of the engine. I feel like it was the perfect situation that may not replicate itself for quite some time. I see lots of other channels, other people blowing stuff up that goes to the scrap yard, and I just, I, it's not my thing. I can't get behind that. There are other engines that need to blow up. I know, you guys have been very patient. Uh, most of you have been patient, and I appreciate you that have been. Uh, it takes a lot to get this thing started and I promise the video will be coming soon. It's gonna be a good one. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, two-parter. I don't really do a lot of two-part videos these days, but I had a lot of fun with this and it was a good learning experience. So if you'd like to buy any parts out of this engine or off of that Volkswagen CC, we saved all the good stuff off of it or off of anything else I've torn down, I'm gonna leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars just about every single week. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one. Has, uh, has anybody seen the water pump? I It's gone. <laughs>